you very much. And we have coming up, Charles, are you here? I'm here. Can you hear me? Oh, Charles, nice to see you. Uh, well, Andy spoke about just like the various challenges that we have operationalizing uh, LLMs. And one of those is obviously data labeling, right? And this has not been a new problem. It's a problem that even existed in the more like classical era of machine learning, right? Even just like in the supervised uh, problems that we had seen before. I suspect that they take on a slightly different kind of uh, dimension and consequence right now. Uh, and perhaps that will trigger new types of workflows and pipelines and ways to think about all these different things. Uh, we would love to get your thoughts on this. So please, the stage is yours. Do you need to share your screen? I do. Um, let me share. And I guess, can everybody uh, see the slides? Yep, we can see it. Great. I'll be back in 10 minutes. Perfect. Um, so yeah, thank you everybody for um, tuning in. Um, Again, this talk isn't sort of prescribing a way of, uh, you know, building your own data labeling pipelines or, or doing data labeling. Um, it's really just uh, some of the learnings that we've uncovered at TextMine um, through building our own data labeling team and, and fine tuning our own models. Um, and of course, um, this is not, you know, the, the way to label, it's a way and, um, and hopefully uh, you'll, you'll find this talk useful. So in terms of uh, the agenda, uh, some context about TextMine, um, and then just uh, some bullet points around, um, you know, when you might need to consider uh, building a data labeling team, um, how to design the problem for uh, data labeling, um, and in particular for the data labelers, um, the importance of feedback loops, um, and then we'll sort of touch briefly on some of the tooling that we've used, um, but you know, as uh, Andy said on the previous talk, there's there's so many um, tools and technologies popping up that um, you know, again, it's not a it's not the way to sort of um, do your data labeling. It's a way, um, and I think in terms of next steps, um, I don't want to sort of say what the future of data labeling will be like, um, but but I do have some sort of predictions in terms of where uh, the the next challenges or, or tooling will evolve. So briefly about TextMine, um, I'm the one of the co-founders, uh, Amber, who you can see in the, the picture is my other co-founder. And essentially what we have is an end-to-end -end, uh, platform that allows uh, business users to sort of extract key data points from their PDF documents and sort of navigate and manage them within a knowledge graph. Um, and sort of we're sort of combining uh, LLMs and knowledge graphs to sort of deliver uh, accurate and ac actionable uh, insights and knowledge. So in terms of, um, you know, when you need data labeling, um, it sort of is obviously the foundational models have been trained on vast amounts of data um, and they can write poems and, and all sorts of wonderful things. But for most business uh, use cases, uh, they will not necessarily have enough knowledge to um, you know, deliver relevant performance or accurate enough performance to sort of be useful. Um, so especially if you are working with uh, open source models and trying to sort of fine tune it for your own uh, specific requirements, um, that's when you might want to uh, consider data labeling. Um, you might also want to um, do this if you have uh, proprietary data, especially if, for example, you're a SaaS platform and you've been, you've got thousands of users and you've been around for a couple of years, you probably will have um, very interesting data that can be used to fine tune the model. Um, and then I think just thinking beyond chat, especially if you are uh, using uh, LLMs to perform a specific task, whether it's an ETL task, an extraction task, or, or something that's relevant to your business, um, fine tuning can, can significantly help with uh, the performance. And obviously uh, for that, you'll, you'll need some form of data labeling. When it comes to uh, designing uh, your data labeling solution, um, the framework is very similar to uh, any, any problem solving framework, um, but what's specific to data labeling is there will be some uh, unique considerations. Um, first of all, you know, what, what is the problem that you're looking to solve? Um, and I'd say what's most critical with, with LLMs is, is does this problem, does the solution require reasoning? Uh, LLMs can't reason um, by default. So if you uh, do need reasoning, then you need to think hard about whether an LLM is, is the right um, solution. Um, 
if it is, then then you might want to try and sort of split the problem into smaller tasks and um, chain uh, the prompts or the LLMs together to sort of um, solve solve the specific uh, questions. The other thing when you are sort of um, you know once you've narrowed down the problem and defined um, what it is you're looking to solve, um, you then need to have a think about um, the labels or the prompts that um, a labeler will need to sort of uh, answer. Um, there's there's two aspects to that. There's on the one hand designing the prompt for the LLM, so making sure that um, it will give the results that you're looking for. Um, but you also need to think that the labelers are not always experienced with uh, machine learning or um, deep learning, and they might also be data labelers for the first time, so they might not necessarily um, understand the prompt. So, so I think, and I've got some examples which sort of highlight where us as a company, we've we've maybe not done a great job at designing um, prompts that are clear for the labelers, uh, and and that's something that you really need to bear in mind because um, if you get it wrong, then you'll you'll potentially be teaching the LLM the wrong behaviors, and um, and that's not good for for your LLM. Um, the next part is obviously once you've sort of done all that, is do you actually have data, um, and how are you going to slice the data um, because Again, um, you need to chunk the data so that it can be labeled, and you need to make sure that um, your the chunks are, are sort of being created in a way where uh, you're extracting enough signal to answer the question. Uh, what you don't want is to have a whole bunch of chunks where the answer to the question is uh, not applicable or no answer. Um, and, and if you do that, you're ultimately not, not teaching anything to the model. Um, Again, next step after that is uh, sourcing the labelers. Um, there's there's nothing. Um, I mean, I, I do have maybe some tips for sourcing them, but but essentially, we found LinkedIn to be quite effective um, for for finding data labelers. Um, but in in practice, um, you you probably want to uh, find domain experts, um, and that can mean students or or you know people with lots of years of experience. Um, and finally, um, you know, around the labeling, what's probably most important is the quality control and uh, the feedback loops. So just to give some examples of um, what some of these steps mean. So um, here, you know, we've got a, a prompt where we've given some context um, to the LLM around, um, you know, telling them that they're, in they're intelligent, they're able to interpret CSVs and transform dates. Um, and then giving some clear instructions around, well, do not do this, do not do that. Um, and this is really to ensure that um, the, the input and the output is sort of aligned with what you're looking to do with the LLM. But again, you won't find this on day one. You'll have to iterate until you sort of find the right prompts that are aligned both for the um, data labelers and the LLM. Um, it's also really crucial when you when you have data labelers is to really uh, emphasize that they should indicate that the model um, you know doesn't shouldn't doesn't know if the model doesn't know then the model should you know say that it doesn't know um, that's really crucial because again you don't want the model to sort of hallucinate answers if they don't exist. Um, and then the other thing, one thing that we've encountered, especially when you think about forms with addresses, there's often a first line, a second line. Um, our software team initially sort of suggested that we split down the um, the, the prompts in, in two, so a first line address, second line address. Uh, but in practice, that that just confuses the model. Um, so, so I think it's really important to um, sort of detach yourself from the engineering requirement and, and actually think what makes sense for the, the model. Um, and so in this case, you can see the with the prompt, you know, what is the first line address and second line address uh, is giving the same same answer. So that's an example where it's some, to, to avoid. Um, in terms of finding data labelers, um, I think that the key thing is, um, you know, that you'll find lots of domain experts, but but not everyone will necessarily have the skill for being a data labeler. Um, even though it might seem like a mundane task, it's really important to, to hire um, or contract uh, people who are consistent and really uh, have an attention to detail um, and, and can sort of deliver quality labeling. Um, you can consider students, um, 
but but it, we found that actually the best way is just to sort of trial before sort of doing a proper contract um and having you know community or creating a, like a, a slack channel for them to sort of communicate with each other and, and improve but most crucially when you're doing all of this uh, make sure that you are signing confidentiality agreements because they might potentially be having access to sensitive data and even if the data is not sensitive you don't necessarily want them sharing the data with um you know your competitors or other companies um, so in terms of more examples of you know why feedback loops are really important with um, data labeling um, sometimes we forget that actually uh, LLMs don't don't know what things are um, so the first example you know the LLMs ask what is the city in the in it from a document and it's saying United Kingdom if the LLM sort of knew that United Kingdom was a country and not a city then it, it wouldn't have even suggested that answer um, so that's why it's really important to sort of feed that back to the LLM um, there are obviously other mechanisms you can do to sort of uh, provide that knowledge, um, especially with knowledge graphs, but in the absence of that, it's really important to, to make sure there's feedback. Um, and I think the other thing also is that these foundational models that you'll be fine tuning, um, they've been heavily trained on uh, named entity recognition examples. Um, so for example, uh, the, the answer to the question, you know, what is the governing law of the agreement? Um, it's identified law of England, but um, that's not, uh, you know, that's not how a human would respond. A human would respond, you know, laws of the laws of England or English law. Um, and so it's really important to sort of feed that back to the model because the models are gen generative and they should be able to, um, you know, provide those types of answers in the long run. Um, and this example here is an example where uh, the, the question has been misinterpreted by a data labelers and, and we've ended up, um, you know, with, with answers from the model which are not actually consistent. In terms of tooling, um, again, this isn't the prescribed uh, tech stack, but um, we use Argila for our data labeling and, and it, it is a great interface for um, the data labelers. Um, and I think in going back to the importance of feedback, um, you know, if you can sort of establish a connection between your live model and your data labeling, you can then sort of accelerate uh, the, the improvements to the performance. So in terms of what's next, um, I, I think really the John, yep. Describe quickly. We we have to. We're at time. Okay. Well, that's it then. And um, thank nice. you for your time, Charles. If you could please stay. Thank you very much for the presentation. If you could please stay on the chat. Yep. Uh, we have a few questions for you. Uh, Smriti asked you a question about the healthcare industry, uh, and she would love to get your thoughts on it. If you scroll up, there's another question that she asked about. Earlier, you mentioned uh, you have to sort of like evaluate the task that you actually have on hand, whether or not it's, it's, uh, it requires reasoning or not. You'll see it up on the chat. If you could please get back to her, uh, she will be right there. Okay. I'll, I'll send you the link. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Charles, thank you very much.